This is the Foxy Aura. It's a five inch FPV freestyle drone that comes pre-built. So all you need to do is bind it to your radio, put on your goggles and you're ready to go and fly. Whether you are buying your first drone or adding to your existing collection, every pilot needs a solid and reliable five inch freestyle drone. It's been almost a year since I proposed to my girlfriend and we're about to get married. For our honeymoon, we're going to be going to the Maldives. A few months ago, I reached out to the resort and offered them a free drone video as we had already booked and paid in full for our stay and they graciously agreed. I needed a five inch freestyle drone for the trip, one that was reliable, had strong electronics and with a high powered video transmitter. Fortunately, Foxy had sent me their new Aura five inch freestyle drone, which would be perfect for this trip. In the box, you get two sets of props, battery straps and a GoPro bolt. This is the analog version which comes with the Reaper Extreme VTX with a massive power output of two and a half watts. For this trip I'm going to be using the Ethics Radbury props. I just really like the control and feel that they have and I've also removed the pink ones from the pack to make up single packets of yellow props. I'm going to be flying with a 6S 1000 milliamp hour battery as well as an 1800 milliamp hour 6S battery as well, both from China Hobby Lines, which I paid for out of my pocket. Foxy do make longer battery straps, but I haven't got time to wait for delivery, so I'm going to use these ethics ones instead. After having an absolute blast at the wedding, it was then time for the trip to the Maldives, and it's going to be quite a journey for us to get there. The first flight is 8 hours from Sydney to Singapore, with a 12 hour layover in an airport hotel. Then another four and a half hour flight from Singapore to Mali before we have to wait and then catch a seaplane all the way down to Riti Beach. After arriving at Riti Beach and being shown to our rooms, it's time to get acquainted with the hotel a little bit more before I fly first thing in the morning. It's 6.30 at Riti Beach, but it's actually 5.30 Mali time. Riti has its own time zone for whatever reason, so they're probably doing their own daylight saving. But the sun's starting to rise and it's time to go out and film. My first flight was around the water villas and that was just to get an idea about how the quad flew as well as the VTX capabilities and if I was going to have any issues. Although I was running Express LRS, I didn't expect it. So doing some flybys by the water villas and as you can see we do have that house reef underneath which we snorkeled in on a daily basis and it was absolutely magnificent. For those of you that have a keen eye you'll notice the battery voltage is flashing zero volts. This was actually a flight I did later in the week because as you'll see the camera I use in the next clip is the Runcam 5 Orange. And in this clip, the battery voltage is fully working. Now, this isn't actually Foxy's issue. It's a Darren issue. And you'll see why in a few moments, but I won't spoil it for you. I went out and power looped that swing, which was pretty cool. And then back in was freestyling and basically crashing into the sand because, you know, 6S 5 inch powered drone. The quad handled really well, but pilot skill is not included, but it was a lot of fun. I would have preferred to have maybe a three and a half inch in here personally, but being able to just fly a five inch around here and control it and not have any issues apart from my piss poor ability to fly was, you know, really, really cool. And here is where I happen to do something absolutely amazing. So orbit around the swing, and then wait for it. Here we go.
so I just crashed into the ocean. It should dry. We'll see how we go a bit later on. After pulling the Aura apart, drying everything off with the hairdryer, I found that the 5 volt and 10 volt regulators were absolutely cooked and the current sensor was no longer working. So I had to hotwire the flight controller to the ESC using the battery input and then wired the ESC directly to the VTX which can take up to 6S input. The video transmitter has a 5 volt output which I used to power the 5 volt pad on the flight controller so it would boot and also power the receiver. This brought the Aura back to life and I was able to fly again and the lack of the current sensor would in the end prove very costly. Flying around the sunset bar at the end of the island was really cool. I was able to do a lot of long, hard and fast runs as well as incorporating a number of flips and trying to see if there's any prop wash. Now the tune on the Foxy Aura is absolutely amazing right out of the box. It is really well tuned and the Ethics Radbury props also go into giving it that extra ability and control that I spoke about earlier. It was a really fun quad to fly and I was just in awe of the scenery. The goggle view was absolutely amazing. Unfortunately, I didn't actually press record on the DVR for this flight, so there's no goggles. But in terms of flight time, when I was doing the battery testing prior to leaving on the 6S 1000 mAh batteries, I was getting about four minutes of typical freestyle flying while on the 6S 1800 mAh batteries I was getting 8 minutes flight time on the 6S 1800 batteries it's going to come back and bite me far too greedy and far too cocky thinking yeah I've got extra flight time although I don't have a current sensor to actually tell me what the battery is up to okay 6.30 a.m. gonna try and fly to an uninhabited island today Let's see the range on the Reaper. Okay, out there is the uninhabited island. Time to get ready and send it. Uh, we're going to be using the 1800 and there's no GPS rescue, so if I fuck this up, well, I'm screwed. So I'm going to take off from just in front of the sandbar and the island I'm actually flying out to is called Dundu. It's a four kilometer round trip with two kilometers out and two kilometers back. My goggles setup is I'm using the True RC OCP antenna, which is an Omni on top, and my patch antenna, which is the Cross Air. For the radio, I chose the Express LRS option, and for the radio, I was actually sent a plug and play, so I had to add my own receiver, and I went with the Maytech Diversity receiver. Um, you can see we've got LQ5100, so that's 150 hertz. For RSSI to have been an issue, we really needed to get up into the minus 100. Minus 112 is the limit for 150 hertz on Express LRS. It was basically a two and a half minute run out and back, and from memory, I was sitting at about 80% throttle. I stuffed around doing a bit of freestyle for another 45 seconds or so over the top of the island before I decided to head out for a second run. Now the one thing that I don't have any knowledge of is what the wind was like out there. Um, the throttle was pretty high the whole time so it seemed as if I you know, wasn't going to have any issues and it didn't look like there was any wind and it was quite still. But you know, we're getting up to four minutes of flight time as well and four minutes 30. And this is where I go back to thinking, oh, hang on a tick. I could have, 
you know, I'm going to be okay because the 1800 battery is going to do me for about eight minutes of flight time. So we get up to four minutes 30 and here I am going, oh, yep, we're still good. And this is where I'm still pretty confident. So I'm like, oh, you know, I've still got, you know, three minutes. I've got another minute till I need to be back. All is good. Let's head out a little bit wider to see what the issue is. And then all of a sudden, I feel like there's no throttle and the battery starts to sag. Oh, fuck off. So that was pretty shit and I've been thinking about that for a few minutes. The lesson learned is don't send your quad over water when you don't have a current sensor. It makes sense, doesn't it? Also the Fox here, Aura, that was actually a pretty awesome quad. It's over five minutes at greater than 80% throttle on a 6S 1800 milliamp hour battery. It was pretty decent flight time, I reckon. If you're gonna fly over the ocean and potentially lose your quad, maybe do it with a quad that you're more than happy to lose. I've gotta go buy a Foxy Aura now, but if you wanna build a budget freestyle drone that if you happen to lose it in the ocean, watch this video here to find out how. I'm Darren Allen, until next time, don't forget to send it.